officials say the religious group was hired to improve inmate behavior, not promote Christianity. A U.S. District Court judge found that the ministry impermissibly endorses religion and ordered it to repay the state of Iowa $1.5 million. Brad Farrell, ABC News. This is ABC News. Hello, I'm Della Reese, and I'd like you to meet Faith in Action. Faith in Action means people keep their independence by getting help from volunteers, people of different faiths who shop, cook, drive, or just check in on some of the millions of Americans with long-term health care needs. Faith in Action. Try it. Find out how good it feels at faithinaction.org or toll-free 1-877-FAITH-11. Gil Fox, ABC News. Good evening. KGO News Time is 11.05. I'm Chris Kidd. Here's what's happening in the Bay Area and the state. Governor Schwarzenegger is planning to send 1,000 National Guard troops to the Mexican border. This is part of President Bush's plan to curb illegal immigration. The governor said the mission would begin July 15th and end no later than December 31st, 2008. Schwarzenegger also said the Guard would rely on volunteers and that troops would be spared the riskiest duty, which involves arrest and detention of people crossing the border illegally. Governor Schwarzenegger revived a defunct state commission Friday in order to have it hear his request for an increase in the state's minimum wage. The governor appointed two new members and reappointed two previous members to the Industrial Welfare Commission. The commission then went into session, taking testimony on the governor's request to increase California's minimum wage by a dollar an hour over the next two years. Fourteen residents were displaced tonight after a two-alarm fire struck an eight-unit apartment building in Santa Clara. The second alarm fire on Sutter Avenue primarily affected one unit of the wood frame stucco two-story residential building, and the unit is a complete loss. Fourteen residents were displaced because the fire department cut gas and power to the building. The American Red Cross was assisting those residents in finding housing for the night. The Alameda County Registrar of Voters is in desperate need of poll workers to help staff the 830 polling places that will be open on Election Day. About 150 of the nearly 4,000 recruits have canceled their plans to help out on Tuesday. The county's plans to use paper ballots rather than electronic touchscreen voting machines. That's adding to the urgent call for help since the vote county method of paper is expected to be relatively slow. The registrar reported the county is in particular need of people with automobiles who would be willing to be in charge of a polling place. Potential poll workers must be registered to vote in California and will be paid between $95 and $170 for a day's work. This news report is brought to you by Panasonic. The new Panasonic Plasma HD TVs offer their best picture ever, three times as many colors, three times the contrast. Panasonic, ideas for life. See them today at Anderson's TV. Let's go outside, see what's happening in traffic. The Bay Bridge, eastbound 80, the entire lower deck of the Bay Bridge, will shut down tonight for major repairs starting at 11.59 p.m. It will be closed until 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Your best alternate route to the East Bay is 101 South to 92 East, and the San Mateo Bridge will take you right there to 880. Also, the Bay Bridge, westbound 80, coming into town starting tonight at 11.59 p.m. till 10 a.m. Sunday. Traffic is going to be diverted off at the Fremont Folsom Street exit. You must exit there. You can get back on westbound 80 at 4th Street. We have an accident to report in Castro Valley eastbound Crow Canyon Road at Crow Creek Road. This is a solo vehicle spin out facing the wrong way. And an accident in Boyles Hot Springs, Highland Avenue at Central. Car hit a parked vehicle there. Here's our Bay Area weather. Low clouds and fog overnight. Lows in the mid-50s. Sunday, widespread low clouds, fog in the morning, then it will be partly cloudy in the afternoon. Coastal highs in the upper 50s and 60s, inland highs in the 70s. We'll feel that afternoon sea breeze 10 to 20 miles per hour. Santa Rosa holding at 71, Hayward 64 along with Oakland, San Jose 66. San Francisco is cloudy, 60 degrees. On your radio, it's 810, KGO News Talk 810. I'm Chris Kidd, KGO Radio News. Here we go for the second hour of the open line to the West Coast over the world's greatest news talk radio station, KGO San Francisco, 810 on the AM dial everywhere. And this is the ABC flagship station to the entire West Coast at 810 on the AM dial. 
We begin with a new switchboard here. It means lines are open for you in all areas here. And all you have to do is pick up the telephone and dial that magic number, 8080810. So load up the lines here. Whatever you think is the most important is what we'll be talking about to millions out there listening to this station. And how many times have I told you, at this time of night, the skip signal from the 50,000-watt KGO antennas is beaming over the heads of a 100 million people. And millions can tune in anytime, anywhere. Your voice is just as loud and clear as if they were right here in the Bay Area at 810 on the AM dial. And I'll bet you do have something you think is a silly question. But there is no such thing. We don't know the answer. It can't be very silly. But come along and join in. Comment now on the emails. Um, it is getting very, very difficult to... <laughs> certainly, it's impossible for me to answer all of your emails. I try to read as many as I can. But they're pouring in at a rate of well over 500 a week. And... and uh, and so much spam nowadays, no matter what you do, it takes half your time just wading through the junk to find um, personal communications. But I try to read all of yours that I can and generally get through most of them within a week. I love the information you send in. I'm sorry I can't answer all of you, but um, keep them coming. All right, Elaine in Arinda, you're on KGO San Francisco. Thank you, Dr. Bill. I, first of all, I... I want to thank you for bringing, uh, bringing to our listeners the idea of what has happened to our, our question of justice, where, what has happened to being innocent until proving guilty. Here we have a situation with Marines where politicians, as though people are acting as judges and jury and executioner, there's not been a trial, there's no evidence, we have absolutely no idea of the facts of this case, and all I can say is I think of Lady Justice holding the scales, and right now she's crying. And but I agree is... with some of these other gentlemen who had spoken, and I simply had to voice my, my uh, uh, agreement with them, and my thanks to you for bringing this to everyone's attention. Take a look at where your media is, though, Elaine. Where are your, where are your elected representatives? You, well, will you will find most of them from the Bay Area headlining uh, that these guys are obviously guilty. This is for sure uh, the most important uh, thing, uh, the tremendous atrocity. Yes, indeed, if it is true, it needs I to be investigated. I have been on the telephone so with my representatives all along, and I intend to keep calling and enlisting my whole family and friends. We just cannot be silent. We have, In other words, these men are entitled to a proper trial. And well, then, eventually, when the facts are all given, then judgment is passed. But I think this is criminal to take a group of Marines who've been probably been through hell over there and then have to face this kind of justice at home. I, I feel very badly about this. Well, I do, too, and I know a lot of other Americans do. But more than that, they use this uh, as an excuse to blank out all coverage of what 150,000 of our servicemen are struggling to do every day and they're listening to this program. Tens of thousands of them listen to it, and they certainly deserve the praise for the service they're rendering this country Absolutely. and render and rendering to Iraq every day. There's several thousand projects that they're involved in, in rebuilding schools and the infrastructure and feeding people. And the Iraqi people express their gratitude for it, but we, never, it. But hear we, we it. never hear about it in your newspapers and and most of your networks. You know, you have one network, CNN, that is, makes a career out of disparaging anything. American servicemen do, predicting failure. You listen to Mouse Blitzer on Sunday mornings is really something. And yet, this network was a favorite of Saddam Hussein. They admitted it after we invaded uh, Iraq. One of their chief executives admitted that CNN was in Iraq, was a favorite of Saddam Hussein's, got special treatment, and CNN did not report the atrocities taking place that they knew were taking place with hundreds of thousands slaughtered over there. They never reported it. Now, you wonder why they're angry that we took out Saddam Hussein? They lost their special privilege to be the only so-called news network in Iraq. Okay? Yeah. Well, well, I'm not so sure the idea of these embedded reporters is such a good idea either because we don't know 
what their bias is when they go over there. Well, take so a I look. I don't think we're getting true facts. Anyway. Well, take a look at take a look at the CNN. I've heard from a lot of CNN reporters over the last few years, and I've told you about it on this program, who were frustrated that they had stories they wanted aired, but the editors in Atlanta for that particular network. The Snide group behind the scenes refused to run a lot of stories, a lot of footage of good things done by our servicemen over there. And, um, uh, and, and you look at their foreign correspondents, a couple of English guys. This is Nick Robertson. They hate America. They've been after America for a long time. That's the, uh, that's the, that's the observer they have as a network in, in Iraq reporting to you what is being done by our servicemen. I just think that it's up to all of us to either continue writing letters to the editor, hopefully they get published, and then be in touch with our representatives. I mean, otherwise we don't have much of a chance. Hey, I heartily agree with you, and thank you very much for calling KGO. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. KGO, time now, 11.15. It's been about nine years now since I had a home over in the Central Valley where it's hot in the summer, cold in the winter. It was an older home, and I made a tremendous investment. I replaced all the old, noisy, drafty, single-pane windows and doors with some top-of-the-line, dual-pane windows and doors. $7,800 investment. Made a tremendous improvement in the looks and the praise value of that home. Big reduction in energy costs. But then about three years later... I discovered a website on a company called NewPain.com, spelled N-E-W-P-A-N-E.com. I logged on to NewPain.com. I put in the dimensions of the windows in my home. In fact, I took the specs off of the job I'd already had installed. I got back a quote from NewPain.com to install exactly the same windows, same guarantees, $1,300 less. And believe me, a lot of folks have discovered the same thing. If you're thinking about new paint, I mean new, new windows or doors for your home, you can't afford to avoid going to newpain.com. Log on. Put in the specs or the size, of, you know, the dimensions of the windows of your home, or the, give them the specifications off of someone else's quote and get the surprise, the pleasant surprise, of a price for exactly the same windows from newpain.com. Installed, guaranteed. And keep in mind, NewPain.com supplies all the top-of-the-line windows to contractors and, and uh, developers by the thousands, the windows by the thousands, I should say, on a volume basis and volume discounts, and they can give you the same or better guarantee as anyone else. And most important, if one of your windows ever goes bad, you don't have to worry about it being replaced by those manufacturers. If you can't log on to newpain.com, you can call them. They have an office in the Woodland Dixon area. 800-614-7263. And their friendly staff will help you whether you're interested in one window or a hundred. 800-614-7263 for newpain.com.
And you're listening to The Open Line to the West Coast over KGL San Francisco, the most listened to program and radio station. There are a few lines open on this switchboard for you to talk to millions out there waiting to hear from you, so come along and join in. 8080810. Those are the lines we'll have you on the air here this hour. Scott in Montana, the great state of Montana, says Eureka, Montana. Is that where you are? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Doctor Bill. Well, we I have a Eureka. In Ca- we have a Eureka in California as well. You know. Uh, excuse me. I said there is a city called Eureka in California as well. You know. Yes, there is. I'm in Eureka, Montana, actually. Where is that located? Well, northwest corner of Montana, about uh, seven miles south of the uh, Canadian border, just west of uh, Glacier National Park. Oh boy, that's beautiful country, isn't it? It sure is. Love it up here. What's on your mind, Scott? Well, well, my question is, um, about 10 years ago, I heard quite a bit about superconductors. And uh, since then, I really haven't heard anything. I I thought that was going to be some great new advancement in technology, but I really haven't heard it being used anywhere. uh, Am I correct, or is it being used? Oh, hey, superconductors are being used in many, many applications. But uh, the ones you heard about that might revolutionize uh, transportation, the world, power transmission, what have you, it been harder to achieve than many uh, had hoped would be the case because um, the, uh, developing materials that can be manufactured and uh, uh, put out in quantity that uh, will, will take these tremendously high currents we'd like to transmit and still stay superconducting hasn't been as easy as many thought. But there have been tremendous, uh, tremendous advances in it. The superconductors are used in many, many applications and more and more every day. Did we lose Scott? Sounded like he, yep, he dropped out on us there. Well, I hope it gave you, but Scott, I can tell you, if you go on the Internet um, and uh, check that subject, you'll get tons of uh, material and reports and, and, and uh, information of, 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 of the, about that field of superconducting materials. Jody in Sacramento, you're on KGO San Francisco. Jody, are you with us? Yes, hello, Bill. What's on your mind? Uh I had a case in the meet you a couple of years ago. You were working with me on some equipment, and you'd mentioned that you'd been mining in the past. And I had a case into uh, where, where, did, where, did, where did I see on the equipment now? Ditch witch. Oh uh, yes, yes, drilling and yes, that. yes, yes, yes. That that that's the one I bought in an auction. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. I hope I hope the guys make uh, having fun He's with it. He's loving it. Does he? Good. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, my question to you was, I had occasion to visit an abandoned mine in uh, Nevada County this last week called the Liberty Hill Mine. Are you familiar with it? I've heard about it, but I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know that much about it. What What were they mining? Uh, gold and silica um, uh, on investment. And uh, I think the guy's name was Ray Noller or Noller. I, uh, I don't know, but uh, what, what's the problem with it? Nothing. I, it had shut down back about six or seven years ago, and it's still intact. It's sitting there just like it once ran, and it's been abandoned for years. And I just wondered if anyone knew about how it shut down and what the history of it was. That's all. Well, they usually don't produce the gold or the you know the mineral uh, to justify the expense. Otherwise, they stay operating. I I know of hundreds of abandoned mines, and yet what do they usually do? They let, when they stop them is the equipment need to be hauled off or do they no yeah, you know you, you know in many cases you'll just simply find the equipment sitting there rusting away it, it, you, there are lots of mines that i know about you can find rail cars ore cars drills bulldozers everything sitting there I guess for years that's why they call them abandoned they call them that. <laughs> then someone comes along with some more money, and, uh, you know, uh, in, in a lot of these mines, it's a game of promoting somebody for money to go back and reopen them. Right. And you never know, because the minerals the minerals and resources we use in, in our economy, in our lives, all of it comes right. from comes from mines somewhere, you see. And it keeps reproducing itself, too, I would imagine. No, we don't know that it really reproduces itself. And when you take some gold out of the ground, we don't know that it really... You know, uh, the the ground grows more gold, but uh, the gold goes into some other uh, cycle in our in in, in 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 the world, and it's still there, at any rate. But are you are you still are you still selling equipment? Yes, I can give your uh, screener my number off the air if you'd like. Oh, that's right. Give it to him. I have it. Uh, you're still in the same. Uh, you're still the same firm in Sacramento. Nope, I have a new number. You do. All right. Well, you, you send it to me in an email and uh, stay in touch. You know. Uh, you mentioned that uh, ditch witch, which is a manufacturer of a, uh-huh. uh, of a of a of a directional drilling machine. 
Um, I know the guy, um, uh, I was hoping he had some luck with it and got his money. He's doing well with it. I saw him today. Well, it was a bargain. So. You bet. All right. Well, I still Thank have you. I still I still have the truck that pulled it. That's what I was really after, and uh, so I'm happy with that. Good for you, sir. Thanks for calling, Jody. See you, Bill. Bye bye. Gloria in San Jose, you're on KGO. Oh, hi, Bill. I didn't know I'd get on so fast. Um, well, I I, I want to know um, I want to know why we're not using bombers in um, Iraq to help out the foot soldiers because I think by now. We know where a lot of those uh, terrorist camps are located, and I don't think we used the bombers since we were in Afghanistan, did we? Well, I can tell you this much, Gloria. It's not that we don't know where there are camps that are easy targets for bombers. There are servicemen do have air support from bombers, uh, fighter bombers. Not your big B-52s uh, so much. Oh, they're the not, B-52s are, are going over Iraq at different times n- now? Yeah, well, they're not, but they're not really appropriate over there. There are no targets that are really uh, appropriate well, for... Well, don't, don't the satellites show where, those, where anything is? On, well, I'm, Gloria, Gloria, I'm telling you that the terrorists have not provided targets and terrorist camps that are easy to identify. Most of those were wiped out immediately after the oh, invasion of Baghdad. The terrorists are are hiding among the civilian population. That's how they operate. You'll notice their main weapon is uh, uh, the knife in the back or the a suicide bomber that kills uh, innocents or bombs planted alongside of roads to get people. Instead of standing up and fighting like soldiers or warriors, this is the way they do it, you see. Well, let me ask you this. Do you have any ideas about what could be done to help the soldiers and to, and to uh, you know, uh, accelerate this a little bit more so yeah give them give them some of the support they need for the horribly difficult job they're doing over there for this nation and the world well, what do you and, mean and, 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 inst- and instead of and instead of uh, sniping at them from yeah. the sidelines um, um, uh, and amplifying uh, every mistake every error every imperfection also acknowledge the thousands of brave things that they do every day that's oh, yeah. that's that's the biggest thing we could do right now uh, in addition to the military equipment that they have. Okay, but hey, thanks for calling. Oh, okay. Bye bye. Bye. Clyde in Culver City. You're on KGL San Francisco. Yes, Doctor Bill. What's on your mind? Yeah, uh, this is one that I don't think most people have heard regarding the uh, alleged uh, what the press is calling the, the murder of that innocent family in Iraq. I was listening to a Portland station on the Internet at 6 o'clock this morning, and the host had a military guest from Washington with the recorded interview. They played the recorded interview of one of the daughters that survived, who said through an interpreter that she was hiding under the bed, the reason she survived, hiding under the bed with her hands over her ears so that she would uh, protect her ears when the bomb went off. This implies that somebody in that house set off that bomb. And I, I wish the press would tell the whole story, don't you? Well, if that is the story, I, yes, indeed, I wish they would tell it. Uh, I, I haven't seen that personally, but if that, in fact, is um, the first-person report, the public should know that. But I can tell you right now, the media, primarily th- that hates America and our efforts in Iraq, is not going to report anything that that is friendly towards our servicemen All I see or, 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 or praises what they do. They're going to report the very worst and consider it to be a fact. And look, you've got, you've got congressmen and senators and politicians doing exactly the same thing. This guy, Murtha, who was one time a Marine, is one of the worst in the business. He goes on the air and just takes it at face value that they're all criminals. Well, big, big, one of the biggest yeah. turn, one of the biggest turncoats I've ever running, I've ever seen. He doesn't even give his fellow Marines and our servicemen the benefit of the doubt until the facts show that they're really guilty. But he just takes it at face value, and he's out on every television show because he, he has to he has to get reelected in a, in a liberal district in in Boston, I guess, someplace. I've forgotten where. You know, Bill, it's, it's a darn shame that this is the land of the free because of the brave that are over there, and all we hear. All over the place, including late night KGO, as you well know, is 
bad America, bad soldiers, good terrorists, and I'm really sick of it. Well, you have to listen to both sides, and I appreciate you calling here in KGO. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll take a look at a little of that information. Jeff in San Jose, you're on KGO. Hey, Dr. Wattenberg. Yes, what's on your mind, Jeff? Oh, on a lighter note, back to the uh, precious metals mining. I go elk hunting up in the uh, middle of Idaho there in the River No Return Wilderness area. Yes, I know where it is. Uh-huh. Okay, well, outside of uh, Stanley, you go up to Sunbeam and hang a west, and up there's a big old dredge that, that was used for gold mining. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're, they're abandoned equipment all over the country, in the west in particular. Uh, those dredges, of course, uh, were active all over the Central Valley um, in the uh, late 1900s, early early 2000s. Um, yeah, I mean, early 19... Excuse me. I should have said late 1800s, early 20th century, all right? Uh, yeah, exactly. And this thing is, like, is basically a big ship that floats itself... And it's got like a chainsaw thing on the front that holds about a half-yard bucket, and it just yeah. scoops up all the gravel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it has the dredge on board, and it just, you know, it, yeah. uh, sloughs it off in the back, and it makes its own yeah. water as it goes. It makes it, it digs its own reservoir to float in. And they uh, they were horribly destructive in terms of tearing up the land, but they extracted a lot of gold, a lot of gravel deposits. And, of course, they're so big and clumsy, they were built on site. And when they served their purpose, it wasn't worth trying to tear them down and carry them away. That's why you find them abandoned there. Uh, there were yeah. several several abandoned you could find in Northern California in Central That's Valley. That's just a you know, really you know, kind of a historic thing. There's a plaque there. It's a National Historic Landmark. They have tours and all that. I see. They just barely broke even after about 15 years of service there. Well, that's true of a lot of mining operations. There's a tremendous amount of hope involved, and if it doesn't pan out, they close down. Hey, thanks for that report and the call of KGO, Jeff. Okay, uh, one more thing. Well, uh, quickly, very quickly. Uh, thanks to the men and women in the armed forces. I uh, appreciate it. Well, I'm glad they. I'm sure they appreciate hearing from you. Here's Chris Kitt with a KGO News Update. Well, good evening again, Dr. Bell. The car bomb that exploded on Saturday in a market in the center of the southern Iraq city of Basra has taken the lives of at least 28 civilians. More than two dozen others were hurt in what is one of the worst attacks in the hug of the oil-rich region. Meanwhile, Russian and Iraqi officials say a Russian diplomat has been killed and four embassy workers in Baghdad have been kidnapped. The Russian employees were taken after gunmen blocked a road in the Mansour district and started shooting at the embassy vehicle. Iran's president says his country will consider the package of incentives about to be proposed by the U.S. and five other world powers to persuade the country to give up its enrichment of nuclear fuel. The president promised not to pass judgment on the proposals hastily. At the same time, he insisted that producing nuclear fuel for peaceful purposes is part of Iran's legal right and that he will never negotiate that point. A section of bridge on Interstate 470 ramp in Kansas City, Missouri has collapsed as demolition crews were working on it. A police spokesman says there were no civilian traffic on the elevated ramp at the time of the accident shortly before 3 in the afternoon. Kansas City Fire Department crews are handling rescue efforts. There is one unconfirmed report that one of the workers has died in the premature collapse. A former keyboard player for the Grateful Dead has died at the age of 55. Vince Welnick, who joined the band in 1990, is the fourth Grateful Dead keyboard player to have passed away, adding to the band's so-called curse of the keyboard player. News reports quoted a person in his home saying, it looks like he took his own life, however, no cause of death has been confirmed as yet. This news and traffic is brought to you by Panasonic. The new Panasonic Plasma HD TVs offer their best picture ever. Three times as many colors and three times the contrast. See for yourself at Fry's Electronics. Let's go outside, see what's happening in the traffic. The Bay Bridge, eastbound 80, the entire lower deck of the Bay Bridge will shut down in less than one half hour at 11.59 p.m. It will be closed until 10 a.m. Sunday morning for major repairs. Your best alternate route to the East Bay, just take 101 South, go to 92 East on the San Mateo Bridge. It'll take you right to 880. Also on the Bay Bridge westbound 80, starting tonight at 11.59 p.m. until 10 a.m. Sunday morning, everyone will have to be diverted off at the Fremont Folsom exit. And then you can take the surface streets to get back on westbound 80 at the 4th Street 
on-ramp. We have an injury accident to report in Fremont, southbound 880 at Mission Boulevard. One car is on its side. Lanes 2 and 3 are blocked there. There is an accident in Hayward, eastbound Jackson Street at 880. A solo vehicle accident now on the right-hand shoulder. An injury accident in San Francisco, I-80 at 5th Street. Lane 3 is blocked, causing major backup. And a car fire in Santa Clara, northbound 101 at Great America Parkway. Vehicle is on fire, and lanes 3 and 4 are blocked by that fire. Overnight, we'll have low clouds and fog. Lows in the mid-50s. Evening sea breeze, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunday is going to start out with widespread low clouds and fog in the morning, then partly cloudy in the afternoon. Coastal highs in the upper 50s and 60s. Inland highs in the 70s. We'll have that afternoon sea breeze, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Santa Rosa down to 70. Livermore, 68. Oakland, 64. San Jose, 66. San Francisco is cloudy. 60 degrees. On your radio, it's 810. KGO News Talk 810. I'm Chris Kidd. KGO Radio News. Hey, uh, have you ever wanted to record your favorite radio show the way you can set up a timer on your VCR to record your favorite TV show? doesn't work very well if you uh, have to use a normal cassette recorder. You have to be there every 30, 60 minutes to most flip the recorder over, I mean the tape over. Well, the C. Crane Company, as you would know, solved that problem. They have produced an amazing recorder that's called the VersaCorder. The VersaCorder blends seamlessly into your listening habits, so you can easily program it to record the programs you listen to regularly. C. Crane designed the VersaCorder to hold up to four hours of audio on just one side of a 120-minute cassette tape. You don't have to be there. Four hours on one side. You can even break up those four hours into smaller segments to record different programs. It's that kind of versatility that lets them call it the VersaCorder. You can be out of town, asleep, or distracted by a phone call, and the VersaCorder will capture everything for you. You can order your VersaCorder tape recorder for just $109.95, and of course you also get free ground shipping. And by the way, this is an amazing recorder. You can use it for general recording. as a built-in microphone you want to record a conference. You can record telephone calls. You can record anything that has a, a mic output and plug it right into the VersaCorder. And you can order right now online at ccradio.com. Or you can call them at a toll-free number, 800-522-8863. To order the VersaCorder, again, 800-522-8863. Or if you'd like to see their hundreds of amazing products, log on to ccradio.com. told my flight number is 823, but none of these planes have numbers on them. <laughs> a lady senator called and said, I need to fly to Pepsicola, Florida. She wanted, do I have to get one of those little commuter planes? And the travel agent asked her politely, do you mean Pensacola, Florida? And she said, yeah, whatever, smarty pants. <laughs> a senior senator called and had a question about the documents he needed to fly to China. 
After a lengthy discussion about passports, I reminded him that he needed a visa. Oh, no, I don't, he insisted. I've been to China many times never had to have one of those. I double-checked, and sure enough, his stay in China required a visa. When I told him this little requirement, he said, Look, lady, I've been to China four times, and every time they've accepted my American Express. (laughs) And here's the last one. A New Mexico congresswoman called to make reservations. She said, I want to go from Chicago to Reno, New York. Travel agent said, I was at a loss for words. Finally, I said, are you sure that's the name of the town? She said, oh, yes. Do you have flights there? After some searching, I came back with, I'm sorry, ma'am. I've looked up every airport code in the country, and we can't find a Rhino in New York anywhere. The lady retorted, oh, don't be silly. Everyone knows where it is. Check your map. So I scoured a map of the state of New York and found out, do you by chance mean buffalo? She says, yeah, whatever. She said, yeah, I knew it was a big animal. And now you know why our government is in the shape it's in. All right, Doc in San Jose, it says here. You're on KGO San Francisco, Doc. Oh, Dr. Bill, how you doing? Fine, what's on your mind? Uh, you had a caller earlier that asked about the superconductors. Yes. And uh, I own the only maglev company that does industrial transportation. We got knocked off line behind 9-11. But we're probably going to be one of the biggest users of superconductors. Well, now, wait a minute. You got knocked offline. You mean your business got sidetracked or you didn't get government support or what? Uh, No, they took uh, Boeing, Lockheed, myself, and some others offline so they could figure out what to do about the new security mean? What do you mean by offline, though? Come on. They wouldn't let us proceed, like in the sim lab and so forth. What do you mean they wouldn't let you proceed? You couldn't do any more research? couldn't do anything. They just stopped everything. In other words, your funding was stopped? Is that it? No, it was paid for privately. The, uh, all uh, the you, Look, you've lost me. You're a private company. Yeah, we're a private you were doing research on maglev for transportation. In other words, magnetic levitated trains, huh? Right, exactly. And, and, and how, did they, how, how did they stop you if you're a privately funded company? Because that... Uh, how did they do it, Doc? Please explain to me. Okay, they said that anything that had to do with airline transportation had to stop until they could figure out the new security regulations. Oh, yeah, but that was a couple of weeks' process. I mean, if you're doing, are you telling me you had an operating uh, railroad somewhere, uh, a transportation system using maglev? Yeah, we were using uh, Where, where, Where is this, Doc? Uh, Moffat Field, Haynes. Now, and it's actually built down there and people use it to commute? We were doing we were doing the um, the math models and all the simulations. Okay, Doc, you're doing studies, but it has nothing to do no, with it actual. Done, it hasn't done construction you're, yet. And they're not transporting people, so there's no relevance to what they ordered you uh, to do after 9/11. That's not the reason you're not <laughs> continuing. Come on. No, they 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 uh, told NASA to hold up on that until they decide who could go next. Then they put. Boeing back online. Then no, look, I, I don't buy this story. I'm well, sorry. Well, that's I, the way it is. Well, you may say so, but there's a lot more to it than you're telling us. Okay, I've been in the research business for a long time, and that one doesn't hold water. Okay. Muhammad in Sunnyvale, you're on KGO. Yes, uh, how you doing, sir? What's on your mind, Muhammad? Yeah, there is two points I want you to explain for me. You say the first point, which is the American troops in Iraq to serve this country and the world. Uh, in what uh, direction they serve this country and the world, and then about that uh, accident happened when uh, some of the soldiers killed those families, and you say because they've been shot at from the front and they've been stepped from the back and this and that, did that give them enough reason to go and kill the whole? No, what you heard family? me, what you had me heard me say is we don't know the full facts as yet because there hasn't been an investigation, and to convict them on hearsay is cruel the same way they don't convict your friends on hearsay. Uh, you have an investigation, you get the facts. That's all That's all you heard me say. And secondly, you're wondering my questioning uh, in general, why we're in Iraq? Well, you have difference of opinions, but uh, uh, you are aware that al-Qaeda uh, has announced that is the front, uh, the, 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 the battlefront of terrorism for them. You, you're aware of that, aren't you? Yes, I, I do. I'm aware of that. But when do you want? Do you when, want? When, uh, when, when Al Qaeda enter to Iraq before the American troops enter or after? 
What difference does it make? They're the enemy. No, you want you want to meet you uh, you want uh, you want them to just run loose anywhere, huh? Where do you no, think they? Where would they be? Where would they be, Muhammad, if they're not fighting and fra and facing our troops in Iraq right now? Where would they be? Uh, God knows where they're gonna be, but they. But, they well, the, they, Muhammad, they tell us, hey, Ma hey Muhammad, Muhammad, tell us where were they on 9/11 before we our troops were over there? Where were they? Where were uh, God knows where they were they? You don't you don't know where uh, Al Qaeda was on 9/11? In Afghanistan, I think. W did you heard of the World Trade Center towers? Yes, I do. I mean, were you applauding uh, the destruction and the death there? Uh, no, but uh, do you know who do you know who who carried it out, planned it, and bragged about it? What, yes, Al Qaeda and everything, but this is what happened. Oh, everything, but you just Iraq. but you just skip over that and move on, huh? Okay, no, 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 skip over that and move on. We understand the terrorists and uh, those Al Qaeda troops. They bombed September 11 and they enter the country and they do all these things. What this have to do with the Iraqi war? What this have to do with the invasion of Iraq? What the reason? Give me a reason. Well, give me one, 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 one of the reasons. One, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you some reasons that you don't want. I'll give you some reasons you don't want to look at. Okay. After the Gulf War, for ten years, we spent almost a billion dollars a year to keep the guy from slaughtering his own people. When we went into that country, we found the bodies of hundreds of thousands in mass graves. Their own Iraqi Human Rights Commission estimates that he was killing well over 140,000 a year. We found mass graves of women and children lined up with a baby shot in their arms, okay? The guy had the power to be very, very dangerous, and every top Democrat, as well as Republican in this country, gave impassioned speeches and believed the guy had either had weapons of mass destruction or would soon be building them because he was building them before the Gulf War, and we caught him at it, you see. Now, I can go on and on with what you full well know, including the slaughter of the Kurds in the north, but the, pro the point is we are facing al-Qaeda today, and they stand up and announce to the world this is their battlefront, this is their battle as terrorists. We are fighting them head to head. Do you want? Do, are you suggesting our, our servicemen in the United States should turn around and run in fear? Are you? No, no. Well, I'm then, not. if you're not, then what are you bitching about? Okay. Doctor Bell, don't turn things around. No, I'm not turning things around. I'm telling. I'm telling you a reality. Reality today is Al Qaeda, Zakawi, the head of it, announced as the head of it, and the terrorists have declared that is their battlefront, and that in fact is where the fighting's going on. That's where the terrorists are being confronted. That's where they're flocking and concentrating. Now, where do you want them to go if our troops weren't there? Where would you like them to go, Muhammad? Tell us. Hello. Yeah, hello. I I thought. Yes, sir. I thought uh, you. I understand when September 11 happened. Muhammad, I Muhammad, do you want a hey, Muhammad? Are you suggesting that the American troops should turn around and run today? No, run, sir. What are you it suggesting? Hey, what are you suggesting then? Hey, come on. If you support things. Hey, you, no, hey, you, 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 hey, you, you enjoy the comforts and security of this nation. Yes, How did it get here? How did it get here? Security, and I love this nation. What do you want? Hey, tell us, wise guy. Tell us, wise guy. What should our troops do today? What should our troops do today other than just mouthing off on all the things you don't like? What should our troops do today? Tell us. What, what your troops have to do today? What, your what should they do today, wise guy? What should they do today? Huh? All right. Well, look, this goes on and on and on. Jeff and San Jose, you're on KGO. Well, we lost Jeff. KGO time now, 11.48.